Hello, a higher note community. Welcome back to yet another One Thing 30 Minute Expert interview. Today I have a special treat for you. We have, I mean, I could say that I have a person who's, you know, exciting, but how often do you get to have a showman on your show? Okay, so today we have a, an actual real life showman. Sean K. the showman is very broad in his talents. Um, he produces music, writes music, sings it, does shows, does live events, um, helps creatives develop their, their entrepreneurial side. Sean K, the showman, like really does it all. And, and that's his moniker, Sean K, the showman. He really does do it all. So I'm going to introduce you, bring out Sean K. So you can meet him. Hello, Sean. Hi. Hi, Natalie. How are you doing today? <laughs> doing great. So that really was a great intro. I appreciated that intro. You know, I always, uh, I'm always keeping an ear out on how people, like, how are they going to describe me coming into this show? But that was really good. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You, uh, as, uh, you'd like to write out for people exactly what you would like them to say that makes you sound like larger than life. But, well, but you don't want to sound too good if you don't want to bring people down if you're like, well, I'm not all that. So, yeah. But yeah, Sean. <laughs> well, I like Sean, to think that I am all that. You, know? you are but, all and, that. And, and that is why you call <laughs> your, you have your monikers do it all. So, right. and, and Sean's um, media production company is actually called DIA Media. So, which I hope you can guess what DIA is, uh, which I, I hope you can guess what DIA is in abbreviation. Do it all, right? That's right, exactly. Yeah, I was like, it's everywhere. It's, it's yeah, everywhere exactly. in all your branding. It's excellent, really good. Um, so now, now this, this interview, as you already know, is not necessarily for, um, you know, entrepreneurs, although some of them might be, okay? And every singer has to be able to put themselves out there a bit like an entrepreneur when they're trying to develop their career. But this is um, a lot of the people in the, the higher note community are people who are developing their voice, developing their stage presence, developing um, themselves as, uh, they might not call themselves entertainers, but we are all performers in one mm -hmm. way or another. And in a lot of ways, we are all providing entertainment, but people may not quite think of themselves yet that way. Um, Absolutely. So let's, let's launch in because we're going to try to keep this to 30 minutes. And you have such a broad variety. I mean, I spent some time on your website and watched several of your videos and you do 
You do a lot of things. So I'm very excited for people to have the opportunity to hear from you and also to be able to go interact with you afterward if they would like to. And everyone, I want you to know that you'll have an opportunity. If, if entertainment you think is something you might be interested in, um, media productions, songwriting, um, any of those kinds of things, Sean really can be a resource to you. And um, he actually has a special gift for you that we'll tell you about at the end of this time and uh, that I think you'll be really, really excited about. So hang with us through this interview and let's enjoy everything that Sean has to share with us about his life and his experiences and all of his one things. So all of our lives are so broad and there's so many things that influence us, that make us who we are. There are habits that we form that are th things that are important to us, relationships that are important to us. But in this interview, I try to look and talk with the, the interview each about different categories, about the one thing in that category that if they could distill it down to one thing, or if they had to choose one of those, the many influences that this would be the one thing that they would say. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so Sean, our first question. Is there one thing, a statement or a concept, um, a compelling message or some type of call or drive, any type of particular encouragement that you received that you can point to in your life? And I know you've been doing this for a long time since you were about seven. Um, that compelled you to sing and further that drove you to entertain and perform in general? Man, it's a, it's a little bit of a loaded question because I feel like I, I was brought up in a world that I guess wasn't as encouraging towards the entertainment world or, you know, going into music. You know, music was something that actually was kind of, let's call it forced on to me because uh, even when I was seven years old, that first time I sang was, uh, was an Indian like uh, church convention. And I come from a singing family and my, you know, parents forced me to go up on stage and sing this song. And, and it was more so just kind of like Indian, Indian parents, just being Indian parents and be like, Oh, you got some talent. We got to show everybody type of thing. And, you know, you're a kid and you're, you know, afraid and you're scared and you just don't really want to do it. Um, and so it, it, even after that, it wasn't something that was super passionate to me. And then I kind of stuck through singing through like middle school and high school. And I was in boys choirs and shows choirs and concert choirs. Um, and I never had any formal training, but it was uh, after high school, I actually got more into dancing. And so I, then I became a little bit more of like a live dancer performer. And then that's when I got into the entertainment industry as a bar and bat mitzvah dancer. Um, and then it was maybe a year and a half, two years after that. Um, and I'll say also because I was a late bloomer when it came to, you know, uh, let's call it going through puberty and my, my uh, physical uh, development. So even when it came to my voice, my voice really didn't develop or start really developing until like, you know, 17 or so. And so, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of confidence with my voice at a younger age because I could not find my range and it was really difficult. Then once I got like, you know, 18, 19 and all that kind of stuff. And then I started singing again. Um, then I noticed my voice started to really develop itself. And it, it, and it, it, it still took years and years and years of practice of, of really just kind of using my voice that it started to develop more and more and more. And then you know, in my later years, closer to my 30s is when I started actually developing music and I started writing and that more creative elements started coming in. So, um, you know, my one thing I would say is is finding out what it really means to show up, which is, you know, the shirt that I'm wearing is showman shows up. Um, it, there's a I huge like kind of, yeah, and, and, and that it really that's what it is, you know, and, and through how difficult times may be. Um, just showing up and and putting in the time and effort to just try um, ultimately develops a lot more just, um, you know, practice, but also clarity on what you need to do for yourself. So uh, for me, 
um, my biggest practice, even to today, is karaoke. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a venture I developed just because for my love of karaoke. But doing karaoke, it's so funny because you talk to a lot of artists or musicians and they don't take karaoke very seriously. But karaoke is what I use to actually kind of stay sharp to the craft. And it's what I use to not only work through songs that maybe have come through my way that I've been kind of practicing and all that, but it also helps me to develop that practice in, on a stage with the microphone, through speakers, and in front of a live crowd. So, right. um, you know, that, that, you know, really came into full play, I would say, in 2010. Um, uh, when I was in college and there was a speakeasy that did like karaoke like seven days a week. And I went there and I was going there like consistently. And this was in Chicago. I live in Dallas now. So, okay. um, so, you know, uh, it, that's, that's really what it is. My biggest thing is just, you have to kind of just show up. You have to just put something into practice and element, because if you just sit there and you contemplate like, what I'm going to do, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Or how am I going to do it? You're just wasting time. It's it's a uh, it's a big thing. Like worrying is a waste of emotion. I mean, the more time you just spend just worrying about something or how something's going to happen, you're not doing anything. You're not really showing up for anything. You're just sitting, and yes. ultimately, you're just leaving yourself in your own thoughts. And that's never sometimes a, right. a good place to be. Yeah, you, it's never a good place to be. So um, that that's that's I guess my my number one thing. And I don't think anyone really gave that. Well, I, I would say my mentor Mars. Um, which I, I just released a video, my showman reel, and I talk a little bit about that and, and how he kind of uh, was the catalyst to uh, me going into the MC game and becoming a professional MC, but using my voice and what I'm able to do to develop that within my career and, and bring that part of my, my show element. So, um, you know, the, you know, it's, yeah, that, I think that's the biggest thing is just kind of just showing up. You just have to show up in some way, shape or form. Um, and that, that ultimately is the answer and the key to help give you the answers of what you individually need. I, I am such a huge believer in making, uh, making things so that you, that you have to show up to. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, right now, my biggest challenge, like I just got, I got back into stand-up comedy. So like two years ago when I was in, 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 uh, in Chicago, I, uh, in 2019, I, I did Second City, which is the big comedy institute. Okay. A lot of SNL people came through. Yeah. And I did their I did all five levels of their improv program. But during that time, I did a few stand-up open mics. And um, the first four I went to, I purposely went to fail. I purposely went to bomb so that I can feel yes. internally that yeah. cricket. You know, those crickets in the room, you know? And now I'm back into it and, and I've developed now, like I've been just cooking, I've just been writing and I just, you know, observing little things, little attention to details or just things that kind of just pop into my head and I write it down right away now. I get into a strong practice with that because I can't count on my brain to remember it later. Oh no. And so, and so I- You already uh, said you're past 30, so wink, wink. <laughs> I just turned, and I just turned 35, literally. So, um, you know, this and-, and and it, thank you. Thank you so much. And so it's, uh, it's one of those things where like, I don't feel old, but I, I know I'm not young. And so it's funny when I talk to certain people and they might be over, over 40 and they're like, oh, you're just a baby. I'm like, I'm not a baby. I might be a toddler. You know, I've been walking. <laughs> <for real. laughs> well, I feel like every, I'm 54. I feel wow, like. Wow. I would not have guessed that. Thanks. I, have guessed um, that. You I feel great, like Natalie. every decade has brought something, you know, that richer, deeper, mm -hmm. fuller. And that you remember how you said when you were in your teen years and you were struggling with your voice and uh, that, you know, often fatal period of time that boys go through and it determines the trajectory of their singing life. Like they never sing again because they're so traumatized by, mm -hmm their experience of not being able to depend upon their voice, not being able to find um, a comfortable way to live with it and, and not being able to trust that it's going to come back to them. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, and then you found like when your voice did, when everything started coordinating again, um, mm -hmm. then you found, oh, wow, like I've 
it's a whole new different me and and then launched your 20s and mm -hmm. there's something you know there's just and and then your 20s i'm sure weren't easy mm -hmm. nobody has an easy i don't know anybody that has an easy life and oh and, trust me i was happy to let go of my 20s when i turned 30 i was so happy to let go of it <laughs> that's why I, and I, that's when i shaved my head too oh no, nice <laughs> you're like i'm done with the struggle the mm -hmm. um but yeah, the it's every, every decade is good and brings something new that is going to enrich you, make you a different person um, or just a better, deeper, fuller, richer person than you were before. And mm -hmm. there's more that you can experience. You can experience life differently and more fully, and you can help more people with the experiences that you have because mm -hmm. they do that i mean i don't want to be a debbie downer but it does seem like it gets harder with every decade the challenges sure. are harder the joys are are huger um and and your gratefulness deepens and grows um but it definitely it i don't think life gets a lot easier and yeah. so but when and, and because of that like the more you live and the more you live into that the more you can give and more you can help others and which is another reason why i'm very excited about your gift that you have to give at the end so that's another <laughs> little plug at the end so yeah. right. okay let's move to the next um next topic okay so and by the way i did i i saw in your bio you you mentioned that um you sang a song did you sing in a brian mcknight competition or did no, no, no. you sing one of his songs yeah i just sang one of his songs that was uh it was like a my it was a variety show so kind of like okay. the talent show of the school um and so you know there was various acts it wasn't just a singing like a singing showcase it was okay. just a talent showcase a talent and show. so yeah. yeah and so i uh that was like my first because you know I sing in front of like family and friends like fam well I'll say more family I'd sing I sing in front of family and like um like the Indian community but not in front of my peers and so eighth grade that eighth grade show me singing 6 8 12 by Brian McKnight that was the first time I sang in front of like a group of my peers you know and uh. that was an extremely nerve-wracking oh. um but 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 glorious result and um you know and it was one of those and, and it's funny there's a picture i have it i think within my profile and i think my friend one of my closest friends had sent it to me but it's a picture of me going on stage and all you see is this awkward small little indian kid with nothing but fear in his eyes <laughs> and so, and so, um, i'm so proud of you that of that eighth grader who did it scared that's really, really awesome. I'm a little, I'm a little proud of him too, you know, and, and it's so funny because sometimes I do think in my head, like, you know, that, that um, scenario, like if you could actually go back and meet yourself as like a young kid, like what yeah. would you say to him and just be like, yo, it's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna, yeah, you're going to live through this. You feel like your heart yeah, is your gonna be you're going to be all right. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and it's yeah. going to define, it became a defining moment for you. I mean, clearly, Absolutely. because of all the things you could have said in your bio, that was what you let off with. Um, and that was very a very vulnerable point. Very vulnerable, yeah. And, and that was courageous as an eighth grader to do a Brian McKnight song. I would say it was a bold choice, pretty bold choice. Bold but choice. I had the range. I was a very high tenor, you know, before right. my puberty came in. So I was a very, very high tenor. So I was able to hit a little bit of those notes, but I still didn't have that much vocal control. But there was something there. So like it was enough to um, create enough, I guess, attention or like, I guess, um, va validity. Like, you know, it, it gave me some validation from my peers that they were like, oh, wow, I didn't know you can sing type of thing. And, and so it, it was a really good turning point. And then I, and I sang through high school and then I did the variety show. Then my junior year, instead of singing, I did, I emceed the show. And then I did that also my senior year. That's and awesome. so um actually even on youtube um there is there is my intro video that i made uh to my senior year variety show of me going in that's a video i made like us walking on the stage it was like the video that played before we walked in so um you know it's it i i found like a new passion because it's funny because i realized that if you're singing in a show you're usually only singing once right so you're only putting on that show once but as an mc 
you're back on stage over and over and over again. So you get a little bit more stage time, you get more show time. So like, I found a huge love. I say I'm an MC first before I'm a singer, but I love to sing. So yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I want to point out something to um, our viewers and listeners, just that, I mean, you seem to me from our interactions online and here that you're, would you call yourself an extrovert? Absolutely. Okay. So now a lot of people in my community are going to say, but that's not me. I'm mm -hmm. not an extrovert. Um, sure. And I want to say to every person, whether extrovert or introvert, I want to draw attention to what that eighth grade boy did. Meaning Sean, of course, but um, he did it scared. And, I, and he was, and he wasn't an extrovert no. at all. Oh, he was not. He was, <laughs> and I, nope. I, I, he did it scared. He did it scared. Um, and, and that is, that's half of life, y'all. <laughs> Maybe three quarters of life, just doing it and doing it scared. Preach. So, yeah. And there's, um, and we've also talked about setting up things that for which you then have to show up. That's mm. the other half of life is set up. And then, and then whatever you do, do it, show up, mm -hmm. do it scared. It's okay. We all go through it. And we often go through it multiple times. I love another thing that you said, Sean, which was that you went to Second City and you did some open mics during that time. Because Second City is, that's like phenomenal in terms of stand-up comedy and, and improv. And, um, and I, I, I would imagine was A, very freeing and, and very educational and helpful and also probably very intimidating, I would suspect. Mm. And, um, and yeah. then you set yourself up it sounds to me like in a really great way, you're like, I'm going to do this five times and I'm going to do it four times where I'm like, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to just plan to, you don't plan to fail, but you're like, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to give my all. But if I fail, it's okay. Like these are my times to fail. Like I'm going to win. Yeah. It's my yeah, planning with unpreparedness. That's kind of like what the mindset was. It was just like, I didn't have any prepared set. And I purposely had to tell my mind not to think of material to potentially talk about, right? And so I had to literally, like, even when I was like, like starting to go into my mindset, like, oh, that could be kind of fun. I'm like, nope, nope, no, nope, don't even think about it. Don't even, and just want to go in there simply to feel those crickets, to feel like, because that's the biggest hump of stand-up comedy is that people go, it is extremely difficult. Yeah. And that is the biggest hump to go over is like, you think that sometimes that what you're going to say is going to be hilarious. And then you go up there and it's just like, it gets zero response whatsoever. And that right there is what essentially plays into the rest of your set because it, it yeah. just, it just, boom, it just, it's like that knockout punch. And yeah. you don't know what to do moving forward because you're like, is the next thing I'm going to say funny? Or, you know, like, is everything that I prepared just completely just bullshit? <laughs> yes. um, and so, uh, you know, I went in there, like, it, I listened to a lot of like interviews of stand up comedians. And like, literally, if you talk here, listen to any stand up comedian, they say, if you go up and do stand up, you're going to bomb. Like that is just a natural rite of passage. It is a hundred percent a certainty. It's like one of two things, either A, you go up on stage for the first time and you bomb completely or B, you do really well. And then like your next 10 sets, you bomb. <laughs> and so it's like, hey, and so it's like. <laughs> Babe Ruth, right? Babe Ruth did not, I spent, he had a lot more strikeouts than he did home runs. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, or Michael Jordan. I, I'm not a baseball guy, but I had the same birthday as Michael Jordan, so I lo know a lot more <laughs> Michael Jordan facts. And so it's like every uh, he says like um, everyone talks about how is about his greatest success, and he, he was just like, no one knows that I missed nine thousand shots. Right. And That's not the everyone knows, yeah, and I'm like, but again, it's like he had to miss those nine thousand shots to get those game winners. So. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, it's just a matter of, again, it's just showing up and going for it, you know, and, and, and that really is the biggest thing, but, um, the mental block and, and, and the confidence game, that's the biggest thing that I've learned to overcome and navigate. And now I have a strong control mm -hmm. over my own personal confidence so that when I want to do something or go into something, 
I know how to get my mindset there to make the right steps to get me towards uh, where I want to go. Okay, Sean, you have led me into our next question then. I That's appreciate right. All about setup. segues. All about segues. <laughs> All about the segue. Um, okay. So based on these things we've talked about, embracing the crickets. Don't let them freeze you. You're, you're, I took a sailing class. Um, the first thing they taught us was to capsize because that's what freaks everybody out. And, and, and then <laughs> and if you don't get control, you're dead in the water. Same again. And that expression, dead in the water, you know that somebody was thinking that the first time you bombed, somebody sitting, your friend is sitting who went through Second City with you, sitting in the audience going, oh man, he's dead in the water. And mm. then you learn to pull yourself up. Okay, so what is one thing that you have learned about getting that mindset back? Because everybody deals with that a, the fear of the stage, they, they're afraid of the stage fright, mm -hmm. right? It's like even getting there, I can't even do it because I'm afraid of the stage fright. So that would be one area you might be able to address or want to address. The other one might be like, okay, you're there. The crickets are cicadas. <laughs> they're at cicada level and you're, you're in Dallas. So, mm -hmm. you know, Texas full of cicadas. So it like, just, it's deafening. And that's Texas all is full hear. of all sorts of bugs that are just ginormous. That's no true. <laughs> Big old, I grew up in Houston, so yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah that so, humidity that humidity drives a whole oh, different. Uh, <laughs> I already know. New. I do a lot. I've done a lot of weddings in uh, Sugarland in Missouri City, so yeah. I, I know. I know the. I know the fields. Hot as blazes. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So connected to this area, what's one tip, exercise, mindset thing? Uh, something that could help people um, face that fear so it doesn't turn into paralysis, maybe, mm -hmm. or you can address it however you'd like if there's something that has come to your mind, but that would be so, a really cool thing. Yeah, I, um, I kind of computed to, I guess, a few things. I think the biggest thing, though, and I, and I think this is like the main one, is that you cannot invoke change doing the same thing right it, it's like the 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 definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results right so you have to put yourself um out of your comfort zone in order to invoke change now when it comes to your self-confidence like you can't expect the world to give you your self-confidence you just can't you no one's going to give that to you right and so like a lot of times, and, and a lot of times I see this in karaoke, right? Karaoke is not a competition. Karaoke is not a contest. You have people that usually have to get drunk in order for them to even go on stage and just sing their song because they just get to a point where they, it's not that they're just confident, they just don't care. And so um, it, a lot of times you have though those self, a little bit those self, uh, self-conscious uh, singers that go up and immediately the first thing they do is they apologize they apologize if it's going to sound bad and they or they apologize like oh if the you know not being able to sing it well and i'm like don't don't do that why are you letting the audience in into your head that mm -hmm. makes that you're not you're almost telling them to you're almost telling them to not like you before you even start yeah. you know and, and it's one of those things where it's like, don't let the world into your bad thoughts. Don't give them even the chance or the idea to, to disregard you or, or, you know, not even give you a chance or to listen to you, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people are also, people are feeding the results that they end up getting, right? And so if you feed somebody the result like, oh, I'm not going to sound good, they're going to be going into they're not he's yep he's not going to sound good so you just got to do it just go up there and do it unapologetically mm. you know mm. and whatever yeah. result breeds you just live with that result and that's it don't apologize to, for putting you for you putting yourself out there so ultimately it's just that's right if if you oh, have I like problems. I like what you just said. Don't apologize for putting yourself out there because yeah. nine million people are not putting themselves out there. You are. That's so courageous. 
and don't apologize for it. Thank you. Thank you. And, 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 uh, and, and uh, it's one of those things if somebody doesn't like you, it's like, just know, even the best performers in the world will never bat a thousand ever. You will, ne and, and that, and that, that uh, ironically is a baseball reference, but, like, but, it's, uh, this, right? but, but, but like nobody bats a thousand and you cannot please everybody. It, it's just the, that's just the world of entertainment because everybody has their genre. Right. And so, you know, it's one of those things where you can't go on the stage where you're trying to be like, oh, I want to get everybody to like me. You're just not. And if you do get everyone to like you, great. That's just a bonus. That's just. That's just a bonus incentive that you can just feel grateful for afterwards. But ultimately, not every show is going to be like that. Mm -hmm. So um, ultimately, it, it, it's just a matter of, A, you know, again, showing up. But B, you know, don't, don't give anybody the chance to feed your own insecurities back to you. Mm -hmm. I think that is the biggest thing. Yeah. Almost everybody deals with the imposter complex. Mm -hmm. But typically speaking, people will accept the best of you at face value mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's you inside that's like but I know that I'm crappy at this <laughs> or you know but you're usually not you're you're but you're you you're right you're predisposing people when you apologize in advance or you you know say verbally what your insecurities are because generally speaking people are going to think that you're going to be fine at whatever it is. And if you don't, people generally want you to win. You know, that's, that's funny. They, I, I'm so happy you said that because, it, you know, the world is actually more willing to receive you than deny you. And most people think that they live in a world where everyone's going to deny you. And so that's, it's such an important thing that you just said because uh, the funny thing is, is if you don't give somebody a reason to deny you, they're going to more than likely receive you. <laughs> So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, and, and, and matter, of, it, again, yes, no, don't apologize for it. And if somebody, if, and, and it's at, so rare in the world that you can go up on stage and just bomb and somebody's going to come up to you and be like, why did you go up on stage? Like, you right. suck. Like, you know, it's just yeah. so rare of a situation. And if that person happens, if, if that situation happens and, and you actually meet that person, who is that person? Who is that person to really give you any sense, sense of value? You know what I mean? What are they doing? And, and a lot of times it's just projected. It's just projected nonsense um, that has nothing to do with you. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm really happy you said that because it, it's very, very important that people need to understand. Yeah, I agree. Well, okay, Sean, we have four minutes left because I like to keep these to 30 minutes. That's why I call them one thing, 30 minute interviews. So, <laughs> sure. All right. Um, in that time, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to share with us real briefly one thing you're working on right now um, in terms of your projects, your career, your um, voice, however you want to address that. And then um, tell people what it is that you have on offer today for anyone yes. who's interested okay so I am what's something to, you're working on yeah i'm going to try and compress this as much as i can so uh after i moved here to texas you know i've been you know i, I came to move my book of business out here but i developed a uh, business venture around my love for karaoke and it was a singing competition for the entire dfw metroplex called metro icon um and so metro icon was the first ever or first of its kind uh, Metroplex singing competition. It wasn't locally centric it's just for just one city. Uh, DFW is a giant region. It's That's 7 huge. million people. It's huge. And so any city that has over 200,000 people is technically considered a metropolitan city. So um, there's so many cities and towns that have well over 200,000 people. So I developed Metro Icon which was a singing competition that gathered singers at karaoke nights. And then those singers went through in a legitimate singing competition. And I had uh, real judges that were performers and musicians and, and, and producers that uh, on kind of a wide scale of, of within the industry. And it really brought out the artists and karaoke singers. And so 
um, which will, goes over that stigma that karaoke singers are not artists and it's just not true. Not true. And so, um, so, so, you know, this venture was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. And on top of that, I had to do this venture. I started working on it in July and then my preliminary started September 12th. And so in the speed that I got this done, aside from that, I, I did this entire venture with zero corporate sponsorships and capital uh, funding. I pretty much did this. I, I found the money <laughs> some way and still paid my bills. So um, it was, it was, uh, it was something that I, you know, a, a random spark of an idea that I had. And I just kind of started showing up on one variable to the next, to the next. And then the vision just became so clear that I, just became so confident that I can do it. But then it became one of those things where like, I have to see it through because there were so many people that were downplaying it or didn't see the for, see this end result and didn't think I was going to get to a finale. And I'm like, you know what? I need to get to a finale now. And it was uh, a wonderful thing because I even got those naysayers. I uh, even went up to them uh, and handed them tickets to the finale. I'm like, hey, you should come check out the show that you never thought was going to happen. So... Um, you know, uh, seeing that all the way through and seeing the, not just the vision come alive, but seeing the impact um, be much greater than the vision itself um, was probably one of the most profound experiences. And it was, but it was the most difficult of times, even just outside financially and just the general struggles. I was just going through the hardest of hardships. Also being just a, a newcomer in Texas, you know? So my biggest project right now is the redevelopment. So I started the Metro Icon podcast. I have the first episode already uploaded on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Buzzsprout. But then I have the video episode on YouTube as well. Uh, so people can go check out episode one of the Metro Icon podcast. But all of it is to um, pretty much create a stronger platform for the, for the uh, brand of Metro Icon to develop a limited docuseries that tells the story of me starting this competition as this ne Texas newcomer. And so, um, you know, that's, that's my thing right now. That's what I'm working on is to uh, make pitches to um, larger production houses to get this, um, to get this story told, uh, but ultimately to buy into the licensing that uh, develops the competition to do a second series that would be a reality show um, and hopefully oh, have cool. that. Yeah. And hopefully have that trickle to do another reality show um, that has nothing to do with the competition itself, but actually to do with my relationship and what that what's going to be happening with that coming this summer. So interesting, um, intriguing, yeah. cliffhanger. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so um, uh, because it's uh, my relationship itself is going. It's its own story. It's a very very delicate story. Me being uh, first off, I'm, I'm South Indian, and not a lot of people even just know that. Looking at me, they think that I'm some sort of mixed bag of everything. <laughs> and so, um, my guess being, was going to be Sri Lankan, but that yeah, that's very actually Sri Lanka is closest to the state that my family is from, which is Kerala. So, uh, you know, being a showman itself is something that I have to explain um, all the time of what it is, you know, what, what is a showman that's, that, you know, I even have a video, what really is a showman. And so, um, you know, being, being a showman, which is a, a, a professional role that is just so, so rare you, is, I feel like I'm the only Indian showman that exists. And I believe that, especially within my own community, so there, you know, with my community, there comes a lot of expectations and there's, you know, there's, it's a very traditionalistic mindset and stuff. So, and I still to this day find a lot of struggle just navigating, you know, within my community and my professional field, but uh, my relationship comes with a lot of baggage. And so I'm, you know, introducing that to my family is a very sensitive thing. So I just, I, I'm focusing on Metro Icon first, but once I have somebody that's willing to invest in me with that, they're going to want to just know my story in every aspect. So that's kind of the big picture of what I'm working on. The biggest thing is right now is telling the story of Metro Icon, getting this limited docu-series created, because um, I, I documented almost everything from the start of the competition. I literally have so much footage. So it's a matter of just cycling and, and finding all that clips. And then, and then and all I have to do is then just pretty much shoot the testimonials of the people who were involved um and and as well my side of the story 
and uh, get the story told. And then from there, uh, develop the series to do a second round, uh, which is just going to be bigger and better. That's so awesome. Sean, you have such big dreams and big ideas. I, I, I am, I'm in your corner. I appreciate really cool. that. Bless you. And I'm in yours too. I, I, I love what you're doing with Higher Note. I think I, I, when I looked into just the organization itself, I think this is such a beautiful thing because people have such a hard time finding their voice and, and uh, they know they have it. They know they have it. They just don't know how to push it out, right? They, exactly. And it's funny because they, everyone says sing from your diaphragm. But there is a substance under your diaphragm, and that is the confidence that pushes your diaphragm. Ah, that's good. Voice. Yes, yeah. That's so. <laughs> it's as a, as an instructor, you know, ha most of the people who come to me, and I'll say, you know, have you ever been told to sing from your diaphragm? No, yeah, every single one. Yes, and I'll say, do you? Where's your diaphragm? The, the, the crickets come so nobody <laughs> nobody even knows but mm -hmm. I you're right there's a there's a there's the gut mm -hmm. and I don't that, mean the literal your gut, gut. literally sits I below mean, your diaphragm <laughs> it, it does it literally sits right underneath it but yeah but mm -hmm. I, and I don't mean the literal gut though I mean the you know the the kind of who you are that kind of Hebrew type of you don't have like. to know who you are to sing from your gut you don't you you can no, have you literally yeah, you don't need to know who you are Agreed. from your diaphragm. You just need to overcome all the, uh, let's just call it the bacteria within your gut. You just have to overcome that. <laughs> to follow that metaphor. <laughs> I'm really good with metaphors. <laughs> and that's why I'm such a good MC is because I, I know how to, and I, and I graduated in copywriting from school. So like, okay, oh, that's, uh, so that's, that's why I'm really good with the one-liners, but anyway, okay. that's, well, let's I stop with bacteria. Okay. Yes. Let's not go yes. any further than bacteria. Okay. My offer, my offer. Uh, yes. My, I want to hear, uh, yes. Tell about what your offer is and then I'll tell them how to get it. To, uh, to all the amazing uh, listeners and viewers that uh, came into this, uh, enlightening conversation with Natalie um, and myself. If you are interested to try and find some answers in your goals, your personal goals um, within singing, within artistry, or to find the entrepreneurship within your artistry, um, I'm offering actually a free one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, and if you would like more consultations from there, we can discuss like kind of a package deal, especially coming from higher note, you won't be charged full price, but this first one will be absolutely free. And it'll be a 45 minute one-on-one -on -one conversation where, uh, we're going to kind of break down, um, you know, what you are currently working towards, but what are you struggling with? What are the challenges that are going through, whether it be personal and literally there is nothing that you can share with me that is ever going to freak me out i work in the entertainment industry i've worked in the club life and the private event life and i have seen and heard and been part of the craziest situations you can possibly imagine so um ultimately you can know that you are speaking to a completely unbiased and unjudgmental party that is really going to listen to you and what we're going to do is I'm going to simply just kind of ask you a few questions that are going to, A, figure out what mindset are you currently in and what are you trying to accomplish and what steps are you currently doing to try and get to those goals and are you on the right wave or are you pretty much swinging at waves trying to knock them backwards and you're getting nowhere? if that makes sense. So um, it's a one-on-one -on -one with me and it doesn't matter what field you're in. It might not even be towards singing or artistry or anything. It literally can be anything. If you want to go into baking, if you want to go be, be a lawyer, be a doctor, whatever it is, like um, my, I might not be the person that has all the answers, but I'm definitely going to give you a perspective. And I'm definitely going to get you at least thinking about some of the practices maybe or just your general mindset of what you're in. Um, and it, it, you'll at least get something out of it. You won't, you won't leave with it as it being a waste of 45 minutes. This is fantastic, Sean. Thank you so much. And um, everybody, if you would like to get a hold of Sean's time and get into his calendar, then I want you to go to the form that you see either right here mm -hmm. or right here, right on this mm -hmm. page. It's going to be one of these two places. 
probably, or maybe down there. And okay. just put your name and your email address in there and instantly you'll have a Calendly link that you can use to set up uh, a one-on-one -on -one time with Sean. And then you'll also get a, an email in your inbox that confirms that and that, um, that um, you'll get one from Sean and you'll get one from me just to make sure that everything is syncing and you get to be able to connect with Sean. Yes, go through the form. I messed that up. Go through the form. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mess it up. I, I'm, I'm going to edit that back in. So, uh, <laughs> but um, folks, I, this is such an amazing opportunity as you have already come to see from just this brief time that we've had with Sean K, the entertainer. Sean has a wide variety of experiences. Um, in not only entertainment, not only in singing, but we didn't even touch on his songwriting. And, um, and we've only on the, on the peripheral, like talked about his skill with discussing mindset. And I really believe that if you're someone who is interested in going further into, into the entertainment field um, or in any way, that Sean could be an amazing resource for you. And, you know, at least for the one opportunity. I mean, what a gift. That's a gift. So I am shamelessly plugging this to my community. <laughs> so, and you guys all know already that I have specific to singers, a singing strategy session. But I want any of you who are interested, be, you know what? I may not be the best fit for you. Sean may be a better fit for you. He may give you the rump kicking that you need. <laughs> and and it's like, I'm a big believer in fit, uh, finding a coach that fits, finding instructors that fit. Um, I mean, because I've had experiences myself where I've been, I put myself in a situation or been drawn into a situation where um, it was not the right fit and it did not, um, it just didn't flourish as much as it could have. So, I feel that. And it's vice versa. I might, I might be a little bit too harsh or I might be a little bit too blunt and you need a calming, beautiful presence like Natalie to help <laughs> navigate you to the right road. So, uh, but I but, believe that. Yes, yes. It's all about the right fit. But take Sean up on his offer and, and just check it out and see. And if you have questions that um, you think maybe he could answer, and um, it sounds to me like, you know, even if he can't answer them, he can help you sort through those questions. And or find the resources. And yeah, hopefully and point you in the direction of the resources. And just and brainstorm resources with you. So it's it you cannot lose. You yes. cannot lose by that is the by, that is the that is the situation that I always try to read in every business result. If I'm ever working uh, uh, creating a business plan for somebody. It is, even if I don't work out for you, you will not lose. Even if I, what, I, what I'm trying to bring to you doesn't completely flourish. And that, that's what I did with Metro Icon, which you know, ultimately didn't help me profit, but I wasn't trying to profit, I was trying to breed results. So um, you know, that, that's the biggest thing is that no matter what, you're not gonna get a losing equation out of me. You're gonna get at least something out of it. And at least it'll be, you know, something where you won't say that's a waste of time or you lost something. That's right. So go put your name in the form. In the form. Wherever it ends up on the page yes. after it gets all edited. So, um, so Sean, thank you so much for spending time with me today and spending time with the A Higher Note community and for being just present with us and showing up. Yes, for absolutely. Showing up and for no, us. thank you. And, no, and, thank you, uh, Natalie. I, I, uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for anybody that allows me to give a platform to at least tell my story and, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, give something out to the world. You know, that's ultimately what I'm trying to do. But thank you also for all the work that you've been doing with Higher Note and also giving me uh, the chance to uh, get to know each other because this is this is a connection that's going to last a lifetime. <laughs> Agreed. I, I definitely hope so. Agreed. So thank yeah. you, Sean. And thank you, A Higher Note community, for spending time with us, too, and uh, for tuning in, so to speak, even though we don't tune anymore, but for, for being here with us and, um, and spending time. And I hope that this has also been a blessing to you and helpful to you and um, that you have a great day.
All right. That's right. You See tune you. in to higher note to help you tune up. <laughs> like it. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> you got George you. Smith. All right, don't Thank go away, Sean, but I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>